What's up guys, in this video, we're going to explore how to take the square root of a variable expression. Now we're gonna go ahead and do that by working through five different examples. I hope you enjoy. Again, the same thing is we wanna be able to rewrite this so we can apply our identity element. The problem is 75 is not a square number because remember, if there's no number in front, we can assume that the number is a two, right? The index is two. So the issue we have here is 75 is not a square number. So again, what we still want to do is rewrite it in terms of a square number. So I go ahead and look at my square numbers and I say, do any of those numbers, any of those square numbers evenly divide into 75? And the largest one, we always want to find the largest one that does, would be 75. So you could do, I'm sorry, not 75, 25. 25 times 3, and then I could rewrite this as r squared times r. Now the reason why I want to pick a square number is because all square numbers can be rewritten as a number squared. So 25 can be rewritten as what squared? Five. five. Well now, the square root of r squared is, or five squared is, five. I can't take the square root of three. The square root of r squared is r. So therefore, I'm only left with the square root of 3, 5r times square root of 3r. Well, uh, what I want to do is show you how to simplify this radical expression. So the way that I <coughs> I'm going to do this is a little bit of a um, straightforward way. One thing I want to uh, kind of go through and speak with you about is at least understanding um, you know, the square root of a square number. right? The square root of a square number is just going to equal that number, right? So there's special types of number. Here I'm dealing with the variable, but there's special types of numbers that we can take the square root of, which we call our square numbers, right? Those numbers are like 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. So right here I have 500, and if you take a look at it, 500 is not <clears throat> a square number. Um, it doesn't have two factors that are exactly the same that you can, mul that you can multiply by themselves to give you 500. However, what I'm going to want to do is see if I can rewrite 500 as a product of a square number and another number. Um, so what I have here is, let's take a look at it. So if I do negative 2 times, I can rewrite 500 as 100 times 5. And I know 100 is a square number because that's 100 times, or I'm sorry, that's 10 times 10, right? Now I need to see how can I rewrite m to the fourth, n to the fifth, and n and p to the third as a product of a square number that I can take the square root of. And p to the four, p or m to the m to the fourth can be m squared times m squared. N to the fifth could be n squared times n squared times n. And p cubed can just be p squared times p. Now, why am I uh, multiplying all these out? Well, remember that uh, when we multiply numbers with exponents, we add the exponents. That's how I get n squared times n squared times n to the first power equals 2 plus 2 plus 1, which is going to be n to the fifth. So now by applying this, so now I've rewritten this out, right? These are equivalent. Well, now what I can do is I can take the square root of each one of these numbers and simplify it. So here I have negative 2 times the square root of 100 is just 10. I can't take the square root of 5, so that's going to remain under the radical. The square root of m is m. The square root of m is m. And this is base by here. The square root of n is n. The square root of n, sorry, the square root of n squared is n. This n is going to have to remain on the radical because you can't take the square root of n. The square root of p squared is just going to be p as well. Then what was left over? I had, an, I had 5, this n, and this p. So those are going to remain under my radical symbol. So I have 5 and p. OK, so now we can go and simplify this again. Negative 2 times 10 is going to give me a negative 20. Uh, m times m, since it's a number times number, is going to give you m squared. n times n is going to give you n squared. And then just because I have a, this p all by itself, 
Um, here, I know that these numbers are automatically always going to be positive. But here, I don't know that this is going to be a positive number because I'm just taking the square root. So I want to represent the absolute value of it to ensure that it's going to be positive. All right. See here, if these are positive or negative, it would have been okay because n times n gives you n squared, which we know is going to be positive. But here, um, we need to represent it with the absolute value because it's just p by itself. The square root, remember we take the square root of a number, it's plus or minus that number. So the square root of p squared could be plus or minus. Well, we want to represent that positive value since that's what it was in the problem. So we have p squared times our absolute value of p, and then times what's left in our radical, which is 5 and p. And there you go. That is your final solution. Thanks. So in this problem like this, we have 18 w to the fourth x cubed y. And what we want to do is we still want need to go ahead and apply prime factorization, right? OK. So what we're going to do, though, is we have now just a number and we have variables. But still, the same thing applies. We got to break up the 18. So let's break up the 18. We can do this as uh, 9 times 2 and then 3 times 3, right? Now, variables, I think, are pretty easy because variables, you just multiply it how many times the what the power is, right? So this w to the fourth can be written as w times w times w times w. x cubed is x times x times x. And then y is right there. Does that make sense? OK. Now, there are shortcuts, obviously, to this. But I'm just going to, I'm doing it the long way so you kind of get an idea. And once you start working through some primes, you'll see some shortcuts. But now we just circle all of our pairs. And remember, every pair we can take out. So I have 3 times w times w times x times the square root of 2xy. Now we simplify on the outside. And you notice I have w times w, which can be w squared. And there you go. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to take the square root of 32 times a to the seventh, b to the fifth. Now to do that, uh, we need to determine what we can take the square root of and what we cannot. Now remember, taking the square root of is, is trying to determine what values multiplied by themselves are going to give us our, um, what number multiplied by itself is going to, uh, is going to equal our radicand. Well, there's no number that multiplies by itself gives us 32. No number multiplied by itself that gives us um, a to the seventh or b to the fifth. However, there are some numbers that we can take the square root of um, that to get a even uh, term or, int or integer. And those numbers are what we call perfect squares. For instance, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, for instance. You could do x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth. Um, that was 4, so x to the tenth. Those are all examples. And again, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. The square root of x to the eighth is x to the fourth, because x to the fourth times x to the fourth equals x to the eighth. So basically what we want to do is be able to rewrite these terms in terms of their largest squared number, in terms of the largest squared number that we can rewrite as a product. So for 32, I look at my squared numbers and I say, oh, 32 is not divisible by 36, not divisible by 25, but it is divisible by 16. So I can rewrite that as 16 times 2. For a to the seventh, it is divisible by x to the, or I guess that could be a to the sixth. And so if I multiply that by a to the sixth, well, then I need to multiply that by a to give me a to the seventh, right? Because a to the sixth times a to the first would be a to the seventh. b to the fifth can be rewritten as times b to the fourth times b. So again, remember, the reason why this works is because that is the same as x squared times x squared. And I can take the square root of both of those. This is um, x cubed, or I can think about it that way, x cubed times x cubed, which is just going to leave you with x squared. So therefore, the square root of 16 is 4. 
So I can take the square root of that. The square root of a to the sixth is a cubed. The square root of b to the fourth is b squared. So I take those out, and now I'm just left with 2 times a times b. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you simplify your radical expression. Thanks. This one's a difficult one because our, it's, it can, can be confusing. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, any time that you have a, um, any time that we're looking at simplifying, remember, as long as you have, uh, going back to your rules, of, your rules of radicals, whenever we have a term that's separated by multiplication, you can simply separate them. Like if I have the nth root of x times the nth root of y, that equals the nth root of x times y. So as long as terms are separated by multiplication, you can separate them into their own radical. So I can really separate this into square root of 25 times the square root of x plus 2 to the fourth power. Does everybody kind of agree with that or kind of see that? Yes? OK. Well, the square root of, five, square root of 25 is 5. That's kind of simple. This one's a little difficult. We didn't really spend too much time on this. But all I want you guys to understand is you, you can't break up the square root across addition. So you could do it across multiplication. You can't break this up into the square root of x and like the square root of 2 um, because this whole quantity is being raised to the fourth power. So what I would do is think about this as like this. Square root of x plus 2 squared squared. Because again, when we're trying to, the identity element is telling us what is the square root of, of this squared. Right? So that's just going to leave us with x plus 2 squared. And that's your final answer. x? No. You cannot. The power rule of exponents, if you remember my rules of exponents, if you have x to the y to the m, the power rule states you can distribute the power. Yes? That does not ever, ever work when you have your terms separated by addition or subtraction. So it's OK. I'm just going to make sure I'm just reiterating this because it is a, such a common mistake. You can distribute a power across multiplication you can, or division. You cannot distribute a power across multiplication or subtraction, or I'm sorry, addition or subtraction. This does not work ever. What do you do when it's x plus, x plus y to the m power? You'd multiply it by itself that many m times, right? Yes? If this was squared, you'd multiply it by itself squared, so forth? Okay.